Uh, with that, first item on the agenda is to uh, approve the resolution for the Brookings Harbor School District condemning racism and committing to being an anti-racist school district. Now, if we recall, this is, um, we had our board packet last time and we had the wrong version. So we have that corrected at this time. Um, so I'd be looking for a motion to uh, approve the attached resolution. Do you want to reread it, Alan? Yeah, let's, let's maybe do that after we get a motion on the table. I'm, I move to approve the resolution. Did you hear me, Alan? I did, and look for a okay. second. Thank you. I right. second. All right, thanks, guys. Um, so any discussion? And, and I think it's a good idea, David. Maybe we should read it out loud. Um, how about Jay? You want to you read that for us? I don't have it in front of me. <laughs> don't have it? Who would like to a little reading lesson here? Someone have it in front of them? I think I can pull it up here. Okay, I think I've got it. So, resolution, uh, whereas the Brookings Harbor School Board stands for social justice and equity for youth of all its ethnicities and backgrounds, and whereas the Brookings Harbor School District embraces and encourages a diverse educational culture, and whereas the Brookings Harbor School District recognizes the importance of understanding implicit bias and how it can impact decision making and are dedicated to not allowing that to occur, and whereas as leaders we, make, we will make a priority to budget for ongoing training with intention to eradicate these injustices from occurring in our district, and Whereas as leaders, we recognize that we are role models for youth, district employees, and the community, and will act in a manner that reflects this commitment in this resolution. Now, therefore, be it resolved on this 30th day of July, 2020, by the board of the Brookings Harbor School District, that this district condemns and will not tolerate racism, racial violence, hate speech, and bigotry in all forms, and the district will work actively to dismantle any form of racism through a review of policies, practices, and district cultural norms. And the district affirms the value and importance of culturally responsive pedagogy and instructional practices that represent the diversity of our community. And the district believes that having a diverse faculty and staff reflective of the demographics of our students provides significant value to all students regardless of color, creed, religious belief and gender identity and will continue to work towards a more diverse workforce. Ooh, any questions, comments or discussion on that, anybody? I really appreciate um, this one. It feels like it's more um, specific to our community. I appreciate the um, importance of having implicit bias because that's something that all of us have. And I wholeheartedly support us as a district um, committing financially to um, continuing that education of what, what is implicit bias and how does it show up. And also, I just think it's important to, um, and I, you know, we're looking at different ways we can get our students involved given the um, complexities of this school year. I think it would be helpful to have a group of students who, um, who are interested to come up with some different what, what their be, re, resolution would be and what they would like to see us as um you know bo a board and um, administration and staff and community do to support them because i think hearing from them specifically those who experience these um implicit biases would be very helpful um, for us going forward yeah good thought appreciate that Okay, don't hear any other questions, comments, or, or particular changes to it. Which, uh, no, I certainly appreciate that. It's a great, powerful message, I think, that we should all kind of refer to. So, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and call for a vote with the motion on the table to approve the resolution as written. Um, so, Janice. I'll abstain. Okay. Kath Catherine. Aye. Jay. Aye. 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 Janelle. Aye. And I for me as well. Okay, thank you. 
Next action item on our agenda is to approve the MOU revising student start date to September 8th, 2020. Alan, um, they're just telling me there's an audio problem. So if we could pause for, let's see. Okay. Um, okay, never mind. So we'll, we have closed captioning. Nancy is saying that uh, we'll keep going. So let's just keep going since we already have that and all the data is published. So she doesn't think she can fix it immediately, but we do have the closed captioning, so. Okay, and I presume we have a recording here too, right? So. Yeah, yeah, and Alan, I am recording, so we could post this up afterwards as well. Okay, okay. Good. Good. thank you. Yeah, I think that's an acceptable method, I believe, so. Uh, okay, so the action item here on the table is to approve the MOU revising the student start date to September 8th. I know this was a topic at our last regular meeting, but um, perhaps Superintendent Marshall, maybe just give us a little bit of a revision again and, and um, where we're at with this. Well, and it's it's remarkable how the picture continues to change. Uh, but regardless of, of the changes at the state level, we've all recognized that there's um, significant additional need for training and professional development and to prepare for uh, the opening of school. And so um, that's, and it's uh, actually, I think most of the districts, if not all in our region are doing a similar approach of delaying school for the students a little bit to allow more time to uh, be as prepared as we can uh, for that. And so as you'll notice in there, um, we, we still have uh, the days the prior week. So this adds to them for staff, which is a real huge uh, uh, benefit. Uh, two of the days are um, what we would call, uh, they'd be like staff direct, di directed but for the purpose of planning and collaboration and working together to make sure that they are ready. Uh, and then we also have on there that um, in, in, on for those additional two days, uh, if we may need to have classified staff do other tasks if they're not directly involved in supporting uh, the planning work going on with the licensed staff. So uh, the language was able to clarify that and that if a classified person is asked to do a, a, a duty that they're not able to do, they just follow the process with their supervisor and request an accommodation or, um, or a different duty during those times. And then the three days are uh, district directed, meaning that will be district and or building training. So district in general, some of those we may say, okay, high school, this is your time uh, to do the planning work with, the, um, with your staff, but it's uh, directed from the, essentially the management end of it for those times. So okay. hopefully that will be enough. <laughs> there may never be enough on that, but um, uh, I was I was very pleased that the association was was very much on board with that, and then with um, your your prior support of it. Okay, good. So yeah, that that's, that's going to be, kind of be my question, I guess, is what's presented to us is written here. Is that does that pretty much accomplish the goals that you have for this change, and it's going to be workable? It sounds like then. Yes, yeah, it was actually a little bit of back and forth and it was just clarifying um, because what I wanted to make sure of is that, uh, you know, with planning and preparation, um, you know, all of the folks will have different roles in that, but there obviously may be different or um, less direct student planning for classified staff. Um, and so there's other things that need to be done. And we have the ability to do that during those two days. If let's say the teachers are engaged in the PLC um, and my role doesn't need me to participate in that, we can assign them to do other things that are needed to help support the ready, getting ready for school to open. Okay, great. Well, from the board, I'd be looking for a resolution, or excuse me, a motion to approve the MOU that we have written in front of us today. I will make the motion to approve the resolution that we're looking at. I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, any further questions or discussion from the board on what we have? Okay, uh, let's go around the table for a vote then. Janice? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Jay? Aye. And Janelle? Aye. Okay, and aye for me as well. So thank you very much for everyone's cooperation on that. And I know. The picture is changing probably hourly, um, but I think a little bit of flexibility couldn't uh, couldn't hurt anybody here. So that's going to be a nice piece to have for all of us, I think. Thank you. And we'll make sure we get that communicated out to the community, at least that that's one known change. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Next action item is the um, 
approval of the higher recommendation for associate fiscal services director of DD Corporate. So uh, perhaps again, Mr. Marshall, we could ask just a little bit of the, the process and how we got to your recommendation here. Uh, so as, as you're hopefully aware, um, we posted the position a number of weeks ago uh, and accepted both internal and external candidates. Um, we had an initial, I don't remember the initial candidate pool, one person dropped out. Uh, and so we interviewed um, three different candidates and uh, the consensus of the screening team was that Didi was the strongest candidate with the combination of her, um, uh, she has some skills with accounts payable, but also um, her just background and knowledge of the district uh, is fairly extensive and that, that felt like that was a significant asset um, uh, if for somebody who would need to learn that position. So, and as I've already mentioned, um, and you'll note with the associate title, so the intent there is one, um, that we will be providing extensive ongoing support for the entire year up through this time next year. Uh, we've contracted with services uh, through OASBO, uh, the state business managers organization. And so um, that person will actually be on site starting on Monday for a few days to kick things off, uh, working on a calendar, priorities, all that sort of thing. Um, and Didi has been working directly with Jared on regular check-ins just to make sure all of the stuff between now and then are taken care of and we have enough money in the appropriate accounts. Uh, so the intent is upon successful completion of the, um, the her, her training and support that then uh, this time next year we would just move her to um, being the director of, of finance. No, oh, great. No, I appreciate the process we took here. and. Um... I guess from the board's point of view, I would uh, like to ask for a motion for the approval of the higher recommendation. I move to approve the higher recommendation for Associate Fiscal Services for um, DD Corporating or Danielle Corporating. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Uh huh. I will second that motion. Thank you, Janice. Uh, any questions or discussion uh, on the motion we have in front of us by the board? Um, I have a question that I don't know if we nest just in regards to Didi's replacement. Um, Didi, and I think you mentioned something, David, and I don't know if this is really the appropriate time. It's, yeah, let's, Catherine, let's, I, I appreciate let's, that. Let's maybe I, uh, yeah, I think we have a little that. sidebar uh, after this. Uh, if, that, if we could do that, that would be great. Yes, but we do have a plan in place. Yeah. So my my the comment in this portion regarding Didi is I, Didi, way to way to have the confidence in yourself. I um, think that you will do a phenomenal job um, in this role, and I think that if anybody in our community, this school district has been able to observe all the ins and outs, it's been you. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing you um, take this on and. And I think it's just as brave as being uh, the board secretary and doing the uh, human um, services, human resources. So. <laughs> well, I, I, I do want to share that I was here, I think, three weeks before I learned her full name was Danielle. <laughs> I'm not sure I knew that until I read it in the, in the I know. Uh, tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah. Okay, any other questions, comments from the board? Congratulations, Dee Dee. <laughs> well, thank you all you guys to... you aren't going to get rid of me too easily <laughs> <laughs> no in fact you still still attend board meetings <laughs> yeah <laughs> just in a different role you don't have to be up front <laughs> well let's actually let's, let's go through the formality here and, and call for a vote okay. in this case uh, Janice aye Catherine aye Jay aye Janelle aye and I for me as well. And I would echo that. Congratulations, Didi. I'm very happy that uh, this uh, worked out to have your depth of knowledge and experience uh, continuing on with our district in an even broader role. So I'm excited for it as well. So uh, that was fun to have done here and exciting to, to move forward. So appreciate that. Yes, very much. Um, you know, maybe, David, maybe real quick, um, what is the plan for, for board secretary and you have a little moment or two just to kind of share with us what your thoughts there are. So, Alan, just real quick, 
um, can I ask my question? Because oh, yeah. Dee Dee wasn't just board six secretary. She also did sure. an immense, incredible job in human resources. So I just, yes. and, and the amount of training that she's had has been phenomenal. So I'm just wondering what that's going to look like going forward. Yeah, I guess I meant the, the, the old DD role, probably all encompassing. Yeah, right. great. Thank you. So uh, what we're looking at is both a, I guess I would kind of say a short term because we have this period of time uh, that's coming up within the next week or so uh, when Terry will be um, unavailable and, and out on parental leave uh, for several months. And so during that period of time, uh, we actually have a planning meeting set up for next uh, week within our DO staff of uh, looking at how we can potentially um, slice and dice the duties and responsibilities to be freeing up Dee Dee so that she can be focusing more on uh, her new role. Um, and some of it, like for example, with the human resources, that's an area of strength of mine. And so that's my intent. The short term would be to supporting, uh, would be to support those parts of it. Uh, some of the other parts, the data collections, that sort of thing, we're just going to map out for, you know, the couple of months in front of us. Uh, and as I shared um, with the group that uh, the intent is to, I would call it apprentice, uh, Nathan Hanscom. Uh, he's been doing a tremendous job here at the DO um, and we'll be doing payroll uh, for the duration while Terry is unavailable. And um, so having him start to uh, assume parts of that role over the next few months and then once Terry's back, we'll be at full capacity and able to really accelerate that. Um, and the, the sideline benefit of this is we will have a very well cross-trained DO staff. Um, part of it would be uh, I intend to, to look at um, being strategic about potentially bringing um, some specific help on board. There's folks who like are trained in accounts payable that that person could potentially come in, help uh, maybe free up grace for being able to do some additional prep duties so that we can essentially not overburden anyone. Um, I, I did consider and thinking about looking district wide, but I felt like this was not a good time to say, okay, we're going to pluck a lead secretary from a building uh, with all the work that we're looking at. Um, and so, uh, and I think Nathan is a, will um, grow very well into that role, especially with the expertise and support that we have uh, within our DO staff. Okay. Sounds like you got a lot of thinking about it already. So that's good to, and have a few places pieces lined up so yeah yeah and next week we're just we're gonna dive right into the nuts and bolts of it we were waiting you know essentially felt it was appropriate to wait for the official confirmation uh moving ahead with dd and then i've already started to have the conversations about making sure that um we're, we're not uh, overloading any one person but that we are going to all and then share the extra work until Terry's back. And then uh, I'm really excited about the capacity that we will have at the DO. Got it. So, so if I understand you correctly, you're, you're looking more short term because of the, uh, the, well, a lot of reasons, but you're, there may be a point in time when you post the position um, to come I, available for the I district? think the, the intent right now would be if, um, uh, and, I, and I have had a conversation uh, with Nathan about this, um, would be, you know, just like DD's, this is a one-year cycle of training and support, um, and that if, um, if, if Nathan performs well in the role, there's no reason why we wouldn't just continue to keep him in the role. Um, he may also choose to say, this isn't what I want to do. Um, and then with looking at the year cycle, that would be very easy for him to be able to um, move back into a classroom IA position if that was his option. So um, it's, it's on, on both sides of the conversation of it needs to work out well from our end, needs to be a good fit from our end, and it needs to be a good fit from Nathan's end as well. And this gives us that ability to do that. Okay. I, I, my only, I'll just share, my only concern is that um, I don't, I don't, I haven't had a chance to meet Nathan. I don't know how long he's been with our school district, but I, I don't know if there are individuals who have been with us much longer that would have liked the opportunity to apply for the job. Mm -hmm. So I just think that's something just to be mindful of. Yes, I, I, I understand. Whole, and I wholeheartedly understand what you're doing, given the circumstances. It would be very hard to thrust somebody in at this point, given what's going on. So I just feel like we need to be mindful of that. And, and I, I did do some initial um, 
in informal asking around to just get a sense of that as well. So nothing uh, full on or official and, and I just didn't feel appropriate to post it at this time, but um, we, we do have that flexibility. Um, and I think uh, that, you know, he, he's a local kid and has really um, fit in very well with the DO staff. Um, and so um, I, I think that we, it can certainly be reconsidered down the road, but I'm really excited with the direction that we have moving forward to help get us going with this school year. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, and then one just uh, note I'll ask the board of while we're, while we're gathered for the moment. Um, uh, Mr. Marshall sent an email out just late this afternoon asking us to perhaps consider another special board meeting maybe about the same time next week, at which time uh, he and the district staff will have a little more data that he's like to, he'd like to share around the survey that have been going on with district parents and perhaps some new plans of, of you know, as we get closer to the start of the school year. So um, I'm just going to start by suggesting how does everyone feel about 4 o'clock next Thursday for another quick check-in? I am available at 4 o'clock on Thursday. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, six, I guess it is. Yeah, and, uh, I'm available as well. Okay. Jay Janelle, is that reasonable? Probably. Sure. Um, Alan, say those again. Well, I just start off by saying the same time next week, Thursday at four, be the sixth at four o'clock. Or if that's a challenge, we could probably move around a little bit. No, that's fine. Four o'clock. I'm looking. Okay. okay, well, uh, Dave and Dee Dee, let's just gonna repeat this same time, same place next week, and we can get an update and a little better picture of the start of the school year from what we've learned. Yeah, we should have a fair amount of information uh, to share, uh, you know, both locally, statewide, uh, and have a conversation about um, some potential decision points because um, you know, obviously those are rapidly approaching. So it, it felt right. the need to uh, get the board feedback sooner than later. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, all right, keep it at under 30 today, it feels like. So wow. appreciate once again, everyone's time and um, have a great afternoon. Let's go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Thank you, great thank work. You. Thank you.